Let's now speak to journalist Fatin Elwan, who joins us now from Ramallah in occupied uh, West Bank. Fatin, good to see you. Um, you knew Shireen for a very long while. Both of you worked as journalists um, in the same area for a number of years. You rushed to the hospital soon after she was shot and was basically by her side all the way uh, until the burial. burial. Um, I'd like to hear from you what you have been going through since Wednesday. Um, I, you cannot put enough uh, word to describe, but I don't know. Like now it's not the time about us. It's a time about her to speak more about her. So I, what I've been, like everyone is calling to say Allah irhamha, but for me, I cannot still hear that word because for me, it's like a video going on about a lie. I cannot stop. Like all the news is painful. I would ra rather have more. Uh, I want to see more of her like laugh and her smile. Uh, so this is shitting. This is what's left from her. We even, um, I was doing my coffee and uh, I have the machine that do coffee that never spoils coffee. But then it did fell on the, on the Palestinian flag that um, she was wrapped with, with her blood on it. So we believe me and my friend who's sitting with me right now um, that she always bug us with the cup of coffee. She, she, even when she's physically not here, she also bugged us with a cup of coffee. She was um, a dedicated journalist, uh, been covering the events of the area for uh, more than uh, two decades. Talk to us about uh, some of the, uh, the shared memories that you had working together. Uh, Shirin was uh, a calm person uh, in general. Like everyone knows her, that calm, quiet, serious person. But they don't know the story of Shirin the human. Shirin the, uh, the very sensitive journalist, the very sensitive human being that before she enters any martyr or any story that she does, she goes in, in respect. She respects their feelings. She apologizes for it intruding their privacy at that time of grief. Um, she's a person that tells a story out of humanity um, about people with, she doesn't treat it like a story. She treats a story as it's her own story, as it's her own feelings. It's, not their, it's never a business or a job that she needs to be done with. So, um, and what you don't know about Shireen that without saying a word, um, she was the number one uh, companion in all the charity work that we do through Ramadan or any other time. Um, I'm well known socially on the ground in here that I do carry a lot of campaigns in Ramadan and other time of the year. So people in need always will contact me uh, that, you know, we have a problem with mm -hmm. paying uh, the tuition or other stuff. So Shirin will, will automatically come. The last day I saw her before she went to Janine, there was a case that um, I told her about, and she said, like, listen, I don't have time to go and cash out the money for you. Can you please take my card and go cash it? And I said, like, no, I, like, when you come back, we do it. We still have time. Hey, so Fatin, this is I mean, the human uh, shit. Yeah, I mean, uh, a truly a touching story, um, your recollections. Uh, you spoke to her before she went out to uh, the Janine refugee camp. Did she at all feel uh, that her life might be in danger? I mean, she's been covering uh, the events in the area, like I said, for, for, for two decades. And Nidal, in, in, in Fatih's package, in News Story, he said that 47 uh, journalists have been killed. I mean, did she feel at all that her life might have been in danger? Or was this a, a routine event that she was covering? Uh, all the time, all the time. We never go to the field without saying goodbye. That, like, that's a ritual. Like, we never go to the field without saying goodbye. But for Shireen, she always believed that she is the, the smart one on the ground that doesn't push her life into danger because she calculated her step. And, like, in our relationship, she always gave me a hard time about how I don't think before going to cover the story. And I'm not being careful. Shireen was never twenty five years of journalism and she said and she she always brag about it because she said like if you want to go there you need to remember that you have a family that you need to care about and when she was going on the ground to cover the story she was not worrying about herself as much as 
She was worried about the team. She always speak about the team, that he's a father, that he has a daughter, and I don't want to put them in danger. But what, what was so weird about this time, uh, while we were packing uh, her bag to go to Janine, she was going there for a mission for three days. She was saying that this time she doesn't want to go there, that she's tired and exhausted, that she doesn't want to be there. And she misses her family and she just want to see her family. It's mm -hmm. been like two weeks she didn't see her nieces and uh, her sister-in-law. And then when I left, we have this clear relationship in which she's not emotional, I'm not emotional. So if we see each other, we hug. And like the way of hugging, like, is, like I, t I tell her, like your hug is like you feel like you're disgusted for me. What, like because she does, she does this and that's the type of hug that she has. But at that day when I left, um, she hugged me so tight, and I said, like, like I pushed her away. You know, what the hell? Why are you hugging me that way? And she looked at me, and she said, I just miss you. And you know when such a thing happened, and you don't really think about it, like you think about it for an hour or two, and then skip that story, because you say, like, uh, maybe she's an emotional moment or whatever. But then when you get the news in the morning, you realize that, I don't know, maybe she felt, maybe she knew. Did she knew or not, or I don't know, but but she felt. I think she did feel it. Yeah. I think she did feel it from the kind from the way she hugged. She never does that. She never like throughout my twenty five years okay. uh, relationship with her. She never does that. Fatin, uh, our, our our deepest condolences to you. Thank you for for sharing uh, a bit of her life. Uh, very emotional stuff. Thank you very much. Well.